an M96 here that's been bored out from a 3.4 to a 3.6 using aluminum nickel sleeves. This is actually a really impressive process. The pistons were used, we actually didn't build this engine. Uh, the pistons are JEs that were used in this engine. The problem it was having is it had uh, excessive oil consumption and fouling of the spark plug on number four. So we're going to use this uh, depth micrometer to measure the head clean, the spacings here between the the head, the piston. We're going to measure from each side. We're going to measure rock, and we're going to determine what our clearances are. And then we're going to make a notation because this engine had issues with. If you come close here, you can actually see contact marks on the piston. This is the same thing goes on the heads. The heads are on the table we pull. But the contact marks are not just on piston number four. It's five, six, one, two, three. So the deck clearance was positive stick out. We had eight thousands. And that's a problem on both sides. And it varied from eight to five positive stick out. And 12 o'clock and six o'clock, we had 15,000 stick out. So this is why when there was rock high RPM, it would come in contact. Okay, so this is the Nikki cylinders here. Um, actually, if you run your finger through here, the nail actually catches right here. So whatever broke and caused this gouge, looks like a piston ring, possibly. These right here, this is Nikki sill. They say it doesn't scratch. You know, I, I even can catch my finger here. Not very good, but I can catch it. But right here, definitely. Okay, so here's the head. This area here, this is cylinder one. This is the one that was consuming all that oil. I mean, you can definitely see. And there's also some definitely crazy caking right here. But if you look carefully, that piston's been hitting here as well. All this is rough. Like this is smooth. This is all right, but this is rough. My nail catches. This is smooth. This is rough. So the exhaust side is rough. It's not as bad on bank one. Here's bank one. So bank one, it's pretty much okay. It's got a little bit here. This one here. You can see the gray. There you go. Some here as well. You can feel it with the nail. Smooth. Smooth here. And some here as well. The valve stem seals are not fully seated. About six out of 12 are not seated all the way. When I pulled the stem out, there was metal debris where that, uh, you can actually still see some sparkles where the uh, retaining washer is for the spring. Uh, there was also debris on the valve stem itself. There was a speck of metal right there. Okay, so this is a perfect valve, Fierro valve. This is a top of the line intake oversized valve. And the problem we're having is, uh, as you see, it's perfectly cut everything. There's like a manufacturing flaw. Once we stick this valve into the cylinder, okay, it pressure checks really perfectly, and if you come over this way, and I'm gonna shine this light. You guys ever seen this before? So I got some light showing through. As I rotate it, as I rotate the valve, gap disappears. All right, so we got some exciting things going on here. Got the M96 engine cylinder heads. There's one here, there's one there. This uh, build is coming right along. We're gonna be installing the oversized intake valves with brand new valve stem seals. And here's the tool we're gonna use to install the valve stem seals. All right, now we're preparing, cleaning everything off before we put this new valve spring in. Here's the new valve springs from Porsche. Yeah, I don't reuse them when I do these kind of builds just because it's just not worth it if one breaks. So when building an engine, it's very critical to know where everything goes. This one has been cut already. So we're gonna go ahead and put these exhaust valves, install them in right now first, and then we'll move down to the intake. We're gonna get them nice and lubed up real nicely. 
clean to make sure they're clean, there's no debris, and we're gonna go ahead and insert them. Just like that. Okay, so here's our valve stem. This is how you want them to be seated. This is our keeper. It's fully seated. Now we're gonna need to decompress the spring. Exhaust valves all installed with brand new valve stem seals, fully seated where they need to be. Here we are, completed with cylinder head bank one. Time to move down to bank two. Intake valves, we got most of them installed. A couple more left and then we'll move down to the cylinder bank two. Finishing the last step. Some grease here, so we're gonna insert the keepers. Performing all the measurements, this is the Nicosil sleeves. Now we're doing the official shaft. Practice run is over. Properly clean the case halves when you're doing engine rebuilding. You want to use ultrasonics cleaner because only an ultrasonics cleaner can get into all the crevices and actually clean all the junk out, whether it be your micro metals, because the the pressure washing and the I call them big dishwashers. They're good. But they're not as good as this. Um, so we're gonna lower this down. Like so. Real slowly. It's about 160 Fahrenheit right now. And we're gonna turn on our ultrasonic machine. I'm gonna turn down the time because I don't need it this high. We're gonna do three minutes only because this actually is already clean. And we're gonna. We go, got more ultrasonic cleaning going on. These are going to be the uh, Porsche M96 crankshaft halves. Put in the main bearings. Got all the old stuff out here. These only have 20,000 miles on them. Uh, here's a one that actually has some crazy wear. Here's, here's the worst one that actually has goes on the very end. Normally doesn't have a lot of uh, lubrication, which there's no uh, oil pressure feed for this one. But yeah, here it is. So we're getting ready to put them in. These main bearings, then I got more than half done. So uh, I'm gonna install them. Then the crankshaft's already cleaned up. All this has been cleaned. And the key is when we lubricate everything, we don't want dust or anything to settle because dust likes to attract to. As always with oil, dust likes to stick to it real quick. So. Uh, once we assemble this, we'll make sure the orientation is correct. The key here is there's the oil sprayers. You gotta make sure those are in. Because if you're doing ultrasonic cleaning, you can see them in there. Uh, there they are. There's a little hole inside there. Um, so yeah, we're gonna put these in right now, just like this. Three, two more, and we're done. And we could, um, we'll adjust them, lubricate everything with lube of your choice, and uh, install the crankshaft and torque it to spec. Then we'll put the IMS housing, the IMS shaft. We actually pinned the shaft. I pinned these. Um, some weld them. I prefer to pin them because I don't want the heat to distort it and have some issues. This will get plugged. This is an old style IMS. This will get plugged and then we're gonna have IMS solution bearing. Just like that. Boom. That is it. Now we're gonna... Oh, thank you so much for the bolts. You're such a helper. See, it's always great to have a little baby daughter next to you. She already knows it. Actually takes these bolts, she found them. Because we're gonna actually retorque them with the used bolts. Too. When we tighten this, we want to make sure this rotates really smoothly. Uh, initial torque is 19 foot pounds and then 90. These are the old cradle bolts. We're going to take these out, um, making sure when everything gets tightened evenly, this rotates good. And once we pull them out, we're going to put the brand new ones. You always want to replace these. So, I already got all these tightened. Alright, so we got this torqued for to yield. So now we're going to rotate the crankshaft, make sure there's no notchiness, it feels really nice. We're doing some ring gapping today, uh, these are total seal rings, if you guys are not familiar with total seal, here's what it looks like. 
So this is the total seal ring. There's a second ring that actually rides, let me flip it the right way, inside this groove once you install, uh, just like that. And what happens is when the gaps on both are offset, it becomes a single piece ring. So the critical part about these rings, pretty much all the rings, you want to make sure the ovality and there is perfect. Um, I mark all my rings, they all go to each designated cylinder. These have already been gapped, all of them need to be gapped. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna light check them. See if you can see on the camera, you see all that light showing through? Goes all the way through here. I don't know if you can see on the camera. It's kind of hard to see it, but we don't want light between the cylinder wall and the piston ring itself. Here's our piston uh, Corello CP. Um, we also will have each piston ring designated to the rings, to the cylinders. Everything is balanced. As you can see, the uh, markings on the rods, billet rods, everything's balanced. This engine is going to be fully balanced out. Here's already one installed. There's a couple more that I'm finishing up. Of course, ARP 2000 bolts. What I mentioned is when you're checking, when you're light checking your rings, let me try to put this against the light. When you butt join them like this, the gap's supposed to be even. Another problem is um, if you put this ring, and I've seen this done before, when you compress both of the piston ring, when you compress the piston rings just like this, and grind both sides, you don't wanna do that. Why you don't wanna do that is you wanna have a guide, a straight cut edge to go by on the left side. I like to only grind the left because if you don't have that, then you'll jack your rings up. And when you get them compressed, they will be either like this or like that. So you don't wanna do that. All right, I have the Crankshaft assembly installed. Time to tighten them up. Went ahead and put the gaskets here so we don't forget. Tape them up with tape. So yeah, the biggest thing is I didn't record this because there's a lot of uh, a lot of moving around that you have to do, but you gotta make sure the dowels are all seated. We verified that the line, parting line, is perfect. So yeah, this is a uh, one of our steps before we get to, of course, everything else and assembling the Bank 2 case. Here's uh, the, our IMS bushings already installed for the IMS solution. Before I pull these rings off, our top ring is intake side top and our double total seal ring right facing the bottom right there so we just installed the pistons and what I'm doing now is I'm measuring a deck height piston and deck so so far we got piston one and two installed I got it torqued down not all the way only half value um, as I wanted to make sure all my deck clearances are the same because these are custom everything's custom on this engine So I don't want to torque anything down and then have to remove and uh, Not being able to properly use my uh, rod bolts even though I have the ARP Bolts you can reuse them and if you have the stretch measurements We're not going to do that to avoid extra hassle. We don't want to see anything too high, you know, sometimes if you have like a zero deck, you may have to have a thicker head gasket. But yeah, we're not gonna get into a whole lot of that because right now we're, we're good with our deck height. It's kind of hard to see it. Right there, it's right in the groove. See where it starts right there. It's kind of hard to see on this camera, but you can see that black circlip. 
Alright, we're good. Install sole on their heads for bank one. Here's where our dowels go into. Torque these up first. What'd you learn from this process? Me? Yes. Uh, I always learn something new. Too much to lift, but. Would you do another engine like this? So finally got this engine assembled, putting headers on here, putting high flow cats, sole headers, and here's the engine that's coming out on this 911. This is the one with low pressure problems. So all we did, we just built another engine for it. And now we're just dressing it up, getting it ready to be uh, installed back into uh, this black 911. It's gonna be a great, uh, project that's almost finished so I'm excited to get it out of here yeah stay tuned once we put it in we'll drive it, it should have a lot more power it's a board out engine it's gonna be a motorsports almost motorsports race engine except it's gonna be an integrated dry sump but it's definitely gonna be a big upgrade stay tuned okay we got the finishing stages getting everything uh, put back on Getting ready to slap this engine back in the vehicle. What a project. Cleaned everything up. Intakes, new tubes, new hoses, and it's gonna go back in to our 911. And then we'll do a break in and give this car back to the customer. It'll be very nice to get it all done. Today, I have this engine ready to be installed inside this 1999-996-911 fully built. This is the final stages of braking we just performed and uh, there was a lot of driving of course driving cycles this is to seat the rings to make sure they're fully seated the rings actually seated on this car as soon as we cranked it up but this is the process that we do in order to ensure the vehicle is properly broken in 